Hey, I'm Steve from This Week With Cars, and today I'd like to talk about the cars that I don't have anymore. Um, I've had hundreds of cars, and I still have a lot of cars, but today I want to talk about the top 25 cars that I don't have anymore that I still wish I did have. I'm also going to talk about how I got the cars and some of the reasons of why I sold them. So let's get started. First up is not one, but two Morgan three-wheelers. The first is a 1929 Morgan Super Sports. This Morgan was equipped with a JAP motor, and although I like this Morgan very much, I didn't drive it very often. That was my 1929 Morgan Super Sports. I did drive my 1935 Morgan Sports quite often. One of the fun things about a three-wheel Morgan is that you can take it to both car shows and motorcycle shows. I ended up selling both Morgans because they really weren't fast enough for practical highway driving, which I needed to do in order to take them anywhere. The second car on my list is a 1933 MG J2 Midget, which I found in terrible state. Uh, found it in a garage and it had already been taken apart. I started to go through the boxes that I had got with the car and started to reassemble the car. One of the reasons I sold this car and the two Morgans is I saw the prices of pre-war cars really falling. It will be cheaper just to buy a good MG J2 in the future. Car number three is actually a truck. It's a 1946 Chevrolet two-ton that I found not running in a garage. I have done a lot of work to this truck to get it running, and it was a great truck to drive, although it was a little slow. Also, the brakes were less than adequate for a truck this size. I also thought the truck looked a little funny since it had been shortened to make the truck not as long as it was originally. Car number four is a 1949 Bentley Mark IV that I found in a shed along with an MG TD Mark II. But this car had an aluminum body from H.J. Mulliner. I loved driving this car, but unfortunately the original paint was starting to peel off of the aluminum body and I decided that it would be better to sell it Car number five is a car that I owned for a very long time. This was a 1952 Sunbeam Talbot Series 90. The Bentley that I had found was even in the same color configuration. If I remember correctly, the only reason I sold this car is I was trying to make room and I was getting rid of cars that I wasn't driving very often. Car number six is a 1961 Humber Super Snipe. I don't even recall where I got this car, but I knew it wasn't running when I got it. I went through things, got it running and driving, and I drove it around quite a bit. I remember after I sold this car, a few years later I saw it for sale locally and the new owner had already taken it apart and left it in a decrepit state. Car number seven is a 1962 Arkley SS. I bought this car in not running condition and it was in not running condition when I sold it as well. I think I did get the motor running, but I never really drove it. Car number 8 is a 1962 Porsche 356 B T6 Carmen hardtop that I found in a shed. This car had been stored for a very long time and was not running. I got the car running again and I liked the car very much until I got my second 356. I decided that since the other one was in original condition and this one wasn't that I would sell this one. Car number 9 is actually the first of several race cars on this list. It is a 1964 Austin Healey Sprite race car. 
This car was in very bad condition when I got it and was partially taken apart. I reassembled the car, got it running again, and even took it to the track. This is one car that I really wish I would have held on to. This leads me into car number 10 and another car that I wish I still owned. This is a 1964 Austin Mini Cooper S rally car. This car had competed all over the world and I'm glad to say that when I sold it, it made its way back to the UK. Car number 11 is a 1965 Austin FX4. I think this car stayed around my garage a lot longer than it would have because I was working on my Austin Healey 100 which shares the same engine as this car and I didn't know if I needed to rob any parts from it. This car I got in non-running, pretty rusty condition, although I did make it drivable and drove it quite a bit. These cars are very practical as far as vintage cars go. Car number 12 is a 1967 Sunbeam Aero Estate. These cars are very rare in the United States and there's only a few around. I love station wagons and they can't be much more quirky than this. Car number 13 is a 1967 Sunbeam Fun Wagon. Talk about a rare car, this is rare in any country. Unfortunately, the interior had been torn apart. I would have loved to have had this as an intact caravan. Car number 14 is a 1967 Volvo 122S Amazon Wagon. This car is the reason that I sold the Sunbeam Aero Station Wagon. This car had also been upgraded with a J-Type Overdrive. Unfortunately, I fixed this car up and sold it. Car number 15 is a 1969 Datsun 510. I've always loved Datsun 510s and I've had a few of them. This is the first race car that I ever built from scratch and I really regret selling this one. This one I used all the time for both road racing, endurance racing, and rallycross. Car number 16 is a 1970 Fiat Dino, which of course is powered by the legendary Ferrari Dino V6 engine. I had this car for a long time and I took it to a lot of events, but I was always afraid that something might go wrong with it which would lead to a very expensive fix. The next vehicle is actually a pair of internationals. Both are 1970. The first is an International Harvester 1200D pickup truck. I don't know why I like this truck so much and the only reason I got rid of it is because I didn't have room to keep it inside and I felt bad setting it outside. So this truck I still wish that I still had around. I also had a 1970 International Scout. I bought it non-running and kept it for a long time. I always wanted a Scout and it feels kind of weird that I don't own one now. I should probably look for another. Car number 18 is a 1971 Jaguar XKE or E-Type. This is one of the very first cars that I ever owned. I ended up doing extensive bodywork on it to make it look more like a Series 1 Jaguar. As I had owned the car and over the years my taste had changed and I really wanted a Series 1. This car being a Series 3 had the big Jaguar V12 engine in it and I ended up just selling it because the Series 1 is what I really want now. Car number 19 is a 1973 MG Midget race car. This car had been upgraded with a Toyota 4 AGE twin cam engine. I did not build this car but this car was built to a very high standard. This car is a car that I could take to the track, beat on it all day, and have no problems at all with it. Car number 10 is another car that I had for at least 10 years. This is a car that you could just turn on classical music and cruise in comfort for as long of a distance as you wanted to. I drove this car everywhere. I drove this car in road rallies. I had a lot of fun. This is a very practical car to own. This is my 1975 
Rolls-Royce Silver Shadow. Car number 21 is another very rare car. It's a 1976 Jensen GT. I bought this car at an estate sale. It was from a huge car collector. The car wasn't running at the time. And I got the car running and driving again. But the car really wasn't worth enough to keep going with the restoration. It would be a lot better just to buy one in good condition. Car number 22 is a 1992 Jaguar XJS V12. I loved this car. I had a few XJSs. I even had a Hess and Eisenhart convertible, but the coupe is the one that I really loved. I just didn't like the complications of having the V12 engine, and I would much rather have this exact same car with the six cylinder. Car number 23 is a 2001 Mustang Cobra. This is the first car that I ever had since brand new and I ended up selling it with only 25,000 miles about 15 years later. Again, it was a problem with just not having the space to keep it. Car number 24 is a 2005 Lotus Elise. I had this car tuned by BOE Fabrication in Kansas City. It was supercharged and had about 350 horsepower. At the time, I had two Lotuses, one at 350 horsepower, one at 400 horsepower, and I just decided that I guess I didn't need two of them. Car number 25 is a 2006 Panos GTS. This was my first real race car. I raced this car for about 10 years setting track records all over the Midwest. I loved this car but you had to work on it all the time and it used a lot of fuel, a lot of tires. I think that was actually 27 cars because I'd grouped a couple of them together. But if you like seeing videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.